that brings us to news or snooze. Bennett's going to give me three quotes. I'm going to decide if they're newsworthy or snoozeworthy. It's presented by Christopher William Jewelers, the only place in Harrisonburg, in the entire valley that's both glamorous and laid back. So if you're in the market for some engagement rings, really nice mm-hmm. necklaces, whatever it may be for this holiday season, be sure to check out Christopher William Jewelers in Harrisonburg and Weir's Cave. News or snooze, all press conference, all the time. Hit me. All right. This is Bob Chesney. He's talking about, he was asked why JMU made sense for him. He says, it's not in the deep south, an area I don't understand. It's not out in Ohio, maybe an area I'm not familiar with. It's not out in Buffalo, New York. This is two and a half, three hours away from my home. He's Newsworthy. Written. Okay, tell me why. Well, because uh, one of the biggest questions we had coming into this was, how's he going to recruit this? He's been in Worcester <laughs> uh, for the last few years and recruiting up in the Northeast. And we were like, well, this is coming down into the Virginia, the DMV area. He mentioned his time. I think he was six years at Johns Hopkins as an assistant. So he's like, I, I understand that area and, and two and a half, three hours away from his house. So he knows this area pretty well. I also liked it's not out in Buffalo, New York. Felt like a little bit of a shot where he wanted to say Syracuse. Definitely was seemed interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's not like I was taking the Syracuse job. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I didn't know what the what, what I was doing in, in Syracuse. But no, I think it it really kind of put to ease a lot of my worries about his recruiting stuff. And I think he also mentioned in the in it that he wants to find people who are familiar with this recruiting area when mm-hmm. he's making those hires. Yeah, Pennsylvania's been pretty good for JMU, so I think it's cool that he's got those connections. Also really cool of him to understand that Virginia's like not the SEC country. Yes. Because I, when he said that, I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, this isn't the Deep South. You're not recruiting Georgia and Alabama and Louisiana and even Florida really that heavily. You're recruiting Virginia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Westford, like that area. You, you're, you don't got to go into the Deep South. Like, he understands there's a difference between the South and the Deep South. And you should be able to do that better than like any other Sunbelt program, right? Better like, than, I don't think better than a lot. Of, I think better than with your success, you should be able to at least stay. If, if a kid has Virginia tech and UVA on their list, JMU should still be able to be on that list. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you should have enough cachet now built up within the high school football community that you are able to stay with those schools. Maybe you don't beat them out just yet, mm-hmm. but you should be able to stay with them. Also really important to note. He was making a very, very uh, pointed kind of point, a pointed point at high school coaches in the area and around all of Virginia. He said it multiple times that our practices are open. I want the high school coaches to come. I want to build that relationship. And that's something Signetti never said. And I think that's, granted, it didn't really matter because Signetti got a four-star and Jaja Boyd and was just killing. I don't know what Kurt Signetti said to these kids. Yeah, you're right. But like really, really, yeah. really interesting stuff that he was so adamant about getting high school coaches involved in yeah. the process. I also thought, and he, he seems like super nice. So I don't think he'd ever be like outright offended, especially in an opening presser. Um, so that he was, by the way, <laughs> one of the his opening presser. Somebody asked him about like not dealing with NIL. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, oh, in Indiana's pro- I thought you meant yeah, like, yeah. Sorry, I don't JMU think he, I don't think he was at JMU. No, he was at Indiana though. Um, but Chesney seemed like to make many points that like I'm from Pennsylvania, right? And had been in Baltimore. Like the idea that I'm some like I grew up in like the far tip of Maine <laughs> is very much wrong. Like he <laughs> it was kind of seemed like the point he was trying to get across a couple times. Yeah. So newsworthy. All right. This is, a, I like this one here. I did not coach FCS football as an FCS football coach. I did not just go on and say, this is just F- FCS football. Let's run it that way. I spent many trips, many hours, many dollars meeting with <laughs> NFL programs and FBS programs. And when you look into the way our recruiting is done, our sports science is done, our practice is done, our schematics are done, typo by me. The overall run of our program is much more like an NFL program than even an FBS program. Newsworthy. Okay. What do you like about it? <laughs> Thank you for the follow-up question. <laughs> no, I think it was, it was quite interesting because I think a lot of 
he must be on Twitter and like knew every like worry us JMU fad, mm-hmm. fans had about this because our worry was, oh no, he was an FCS football coach, not even at a North Dakota State, right. like a Missouri. Like he was at a Patriot League school. Granted, I don't think JMU fans have much to talk about when it comes to besmirching a Patriot League team. We only beat them by like 40 earlier this year, and then we lost to Colgate in the playoffs twice. But so the Patriot League clearly a thorn in our side. But so that was always kind of that talking point, man. Yeah, he's a great FCS coach, but what has he done? I mean, he, he's just in the Patriot League. He couldn't even win the Patriot League this year. Come on. Like, what are we doing? Then when he said that, it, it, he, he really made it a point to be like, yeah, I get we were FCS, but like we weren't running that program like an FCS program. We weren't running it like you guys do at the FBS level. Now, we were re- we were trying to replicate an NFL offense, an NFL practice. And I thought that was just a very, very good point for him to make because – he must have known Chris Brooks, the SID for football, must have done a good job at prepping him as well. Like, here are the things that we really want to make sure that JMU fans have a clear understanding of coming out of this press conference. That right there was a fantastic answer. This is one of the few answers he said, like, without a smile, <laughs> where it was, like, very clear of, like, the question was essentially, like, why do you think you're ready for the job? And it was almost like, again, not, like, offended, but I think part of him was, like, because I'm clearly ready for the job like (laughs) what do you mean why am I ready for the job I think it's going to be interesting to see exactly how he does it and if like how open it is to the public some of his practices I'd love to get in there and watch like a a practice and see what his his schedule is like because everyone around him says he's got it you know down to the minute which is not like rare um coaches schedule it out pretty pretty succinctly but um seems like he knows what he's doing he also went on to say at the end of this answer that they had played four FBS teams over the last like three seasons were two and two and their two losses were by a possession, which is a very fair point of like put Holy cross in the Mac and they're a good Mac team. You know what I mean? Like they're an FCS team, but they were playing like a, a G five team. Like JMU was before they made the jump. I will say what I didn't like in that quote and what I didn't like in a lot of the press conference. And he's fixed it. Now he fixed it on his hit earlier today on the fan in DC. He was using we and our, but referring to Holy Cross. He kind of went back and forth. He had some where he, yeah, where he was like, we, and it was a lot of we's. But like that coach, that that FCS football coach, he was like, our practice is done. Our schematics are done. The overall run of our program. And he was referring to Holy Cross. And I was just like, um, sir, it's not you all anymore. It's us. We are JMU. You're a Duke now. Please refer to us as we and Holy Cross as them. Thank you. That does make me think he's going to bring a lot of his staff with him, though, the way he talks about, like, the way they run things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway. Oh, the other thing, he has the the verbal crutch. He says right a lot. Like, right? Oh, God, his rights. Those are coming Why'd we lot. do that? Why'd we just break the glass for everyone listening? <laughs> I everyone think everyone watching? knows that one. Already. I don't know if everyone – we were talking with Dom, and he didn't realize it until we just started texting right in the group chat constantly. And he was like, ah, oh, I notice it now. Right. I kind of like it. It gets me fired up when he's like, right. Like, right. 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 <laughs> right. Okay. Last one. Uh, this is, this is probably the best one. Somebody asked him about sort of like the, he stressed a lot, personal relationships and motivating people. He goes, I need to show up every single day the same way, whatever I'm going through in my personal life. I need to show up for them. Like it is the greatest day of my life. If you went to Disney world and you watch Mickey mouse walking around, kicking rocks and he's having a bad day, that would impact you in a major way. <laughs> I understand that I am one of one on this team. <laughs> Could you imagine Mickey Mouse walking around Disney World? <laughs> what an incredible visual. Hey, Mickey, what's going on? I hate my life. <laughs> You're like, but Mickey, this is the greatest day of my life. He just like cusses you out and just kicks a rock. Uh, that's a snoozeworthy quote just because like it's it's boring. There's not a lot of oomph behind it. It's an important quote. It, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I'm glad he has that outlook, but it's boring. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Show up. Be good. Although the Mickey Mouse analogy was fantastic. I think it's interesting because I have questioned myself listening to him. Like, is the positive thing like a facade? You know what I mean? Like, is he like, is that going to stop after like week three? When we're, Doesn't when seem we're, like it. Seems yeah. like he's got that Sean McVay kind of like, oh, he just like, this is who he is. And he's got that constant energy which i think will be interesting to watch throughout the course of the season will be very i don't want jmu ever to lose we'll be very excited to see his first loss press conference positive af and that's gonna piss me off yeah he, you watch some of the holy crossers where they like <laughs> lose to armies like 
you know, three or four plays, we want those to go the other way. We're disappointed by it, but fought really hard. And, and it's just like <laughs> Signetti would have been in there. It's like, look, we called the perfect pass plays and they can't throw a football. And that's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> look, the guy was open. Jordan made the wrong read. I can't go out there and tell him where to throw it. We worked on it all at practice and then we get in the game and he just messes it up. What more do you expect from me? Tino's on the headset. He's screaming. He's screaming. What are we doing? What are we doing? All oh, everyone wants me to throw it more. Throw it more. <laughs> I'm gonna miss Signetti's pressures. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna miss. Electric. Can I say what I'm about to say now that he's gone? I don't know. I'm gonna miss Kurt Signetti sliding into my DMs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a personal one. We just had the. I got a personal one when uh, I was commenting on JMU's first down run usage, and he essentially called out Jordan McLeod. Remember when he told us that Kobe White was about to be like a game changer receiver? He never played a snap. That was sick. Should we should we say that it's a lot of stories? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana fans, if you're listening, Indiana media, if you're watching or listening, somehow found this podcast. Keep your DMs open. He'll, he'll get in there eventually. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt about it. I think that's all I've got. Quote wise. <laughs>